Okay, now it is. Um, thank you everybody for being here today. Um, I wasn't expecting so many people, to be honest. And uh, apart from the clickabyte title, you know, Rocky Road of the Open API ST, this is basically uh, what I've been learning on, on the last five years of working in the API industry. Uh, and uh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about that. Uh, I know there are a lot of presentations right here, so I'm going to be sharing the agenda of the topics I had at the time. So if that the topic is not really okay with you, you're free to go and go somewhere else. It's totally fine. I want to make sure you get value from this stuff. So the idea is I'm going to be telling a little bit more about my API, my journey in the API industry, how I came in working into the API industry, what I've been working on, and uh, what I am working on. Then we're going to go to the, into the meat, this kind of AST problem that I think we have. And I'm going to give you two examples, the API blueprint first and the open API two entry specification. And the reason is because I've been working directly with those ones for a really long time. Then I'm going to take some questions and um, you know, draw some conclusions. Uh, this is the agenda. If this is not what you were expecting, feel free to go. It's totally fine. Um, so apart from the introduction, my, my name is Vincenzo. I am an Italian software developer, and I, I'm currently working for Stoplight. Probably you guys know the company. Uh, we build tools for API developers. We focus on the pre-production side of the API. Um, I am an Out0 ambassador. I've been an Out0 ambassador for the last two years. It's kind of an award that the company gives to people related to the security thing. Um, I'm a Google developer expert, which and uh, the initiative was kind enough to swipe the credit card to fly me here. So thanks for the guys. And I've been involved into API days for a really long time. And uh, you know, uh, the event in Barcelona was organized by me. Maybe some of you were there. Um, those are my references if you want to get in touch. Uh, email, website, Twitter. The handle is going to be down on the right for the whole time. And you know, my GitHub account. Let's go to the content right now. Um, Oh, actually, just, just one more thing. One disclaimer, uh, the presentation has been prepared by me. The opinion expressed that solely mine do not represent nor my current, past, and future employees. And now, I understand that for you it's probably blah, 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 yada, 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 I don't care. But I want to make sure that everybody understands this is my stuff. Stop like that has nothing to do with this. API has nothing to do with this. And, you know, just to make sure. So my journey in the API industry. I was working for uh, Deutsche Bank in the, back in the time when I was in Italy, and I was fed up with all the things they were doing. And then I left the country in 2014 to join APR in Czech Republic, where I've been working for probably three years. When the company was acquired by Oracle, I stayed six months in Oracle. I decided it was not for me. And then I left the country, moved in Spain um, in September 2017, working for Lunch Budget. We were part of a giant initiative, and we were basically working for them. Um, and then in October 2018, uh, apparently somebody thought it, I would be a good fit for Stoplight, and they were like, you should join us. And I said, OK, I'm going to do that, which is the place I'm working right now. Uh, so in, um, in these three years in APR, my, I started as a front-end developer, but then quickly I jumped into um, the idea of uh, leading the documentation team of, 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 of the company. And what we were doing basically was we were taking open API blueprint files, which are still a thing. It's an, open, it's an API specification format based on Markdown. We were taking such file, and we were turning it down into um, a documentation. And so uh, you could get table of content, description, even uh, um, a console, a tryout, download um, code example, and all this good stuff. This is what I've been doing in API for most of my time. Um, and then later, when I left the company and I joined a lunch budget, joined the initiative, my, my, my main task, a lunch budget was offering a runtime platform on top of Kubernetes, and the idea was, um, we're going to take your open API file, we're going to analyze it, we're going to scaffold what the server could look like. So we're going to give you the models, we're going to give you the endpoints, we're going to configure the security for you, and also an API gateway. And ultimately, this ended up me writing an API gateway in JavaScript, Express Gateway. Not sure if you know it, but I am the author of that, that, that piece of software. Um, and then I joined at Stoplight in 2018, and after a little bit of jumping around the company, I found my way in, uh, oh. Man, I'm sorry. Uh, I think uh, uh, yeah, I find my way working on Prism. I it has been mentioned multiple times here. Prism is the open source mock server that supports Open API 2, Open API 3, and uh, as far as I know, the last time that I checked it, I think. Uh, 
I think it's the most feature complete. We even support callbacks and thank to the guy over here, we even support allow empty form parameters and he's still wondering why did you, why did you, why did you do that for, to me? But, um, you know, and it's, it's a really interesting challenges and I even have a presentation about the challenges of running a mock server because it's not, it's not something that you do during the night. Uh, maybe I'm gonna share the experience another time. So to recap, basically my whole five years in a single slide has been, you know, documentation rendering, API gateway configuration, and on these, probably some of you were here, last year I was here complaining about the sad state of, of API gateways in, in regards of, um, in regards of um, API gateway support for, with OpenAPI 2 and 3, um, although I think that things have been really improved in the last year. And then, you know, mock server, um, and these all seem to be very different activities, but at the end of the day, it's nothing more than taking something from an open API document or an API blueprint document and doing something else. You know, it's a typical function. You take an input, you give it an output, except that you have something in the middle, which is um, the AST, this application, uh, sorry, abstract syntax tree, which has been basically my fights for the last five years for the reason we are gonna be showing in a second. Um, Let's start with API Blueprint because it's been my entry point into the API world. Uh, so API Blueprint is a format based on Markdown. And so it's, uh, we were, the, the, the author of Zdeniek decided to make a couple of semantic assertions on top of Markdown files, uh, leveraging the readability of the file um, and the whole ecosystem that was in place back in the time in 2011. Um, and so we, the company built a whole suite of parsers, validators, and um, abstract syntax tree so that we, documentation team, or the team working on Dread and other tooling could use it to augment your experience with the file. So the idea was, uh, the first version of the parser was really nothing more than take the file, parse the markdown, extract the semantic assertions and put in somewhere. But this thing was not scaling. And so when Emson was introduced, I think it was probably 2015, uh, the whole thing has been changing, and so the whole AST for the API blueprint has been unified into an initiative called API Elements, which is a specializ specialization of Refract. I'm not gonna go into the details, but basically the idea was, um, this is a, the most basic API blueprint fight you can even create, and this was kind of the AST that was generated, and you can see this is basically a monster. Um, so this is what I was dealing with. Not that, but that. Uh, and so you can see what's also kind of a recursive structure. You can see content and then content again, content again. And the idea they had in mind back in the time was if we can use as the most simple structure and make it recursive, it's gonna be way easier for the tooling and the other teams in the company um, you know, to, 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 to use it and provide value to the customers. Uh, it wasn't really the case. Uh, the problem we had back in the time is that we did not have the tooling to navigate this monster, this dragon, uh, in an easy way. And so uh, I remember we had one team on the right, that, like kind of the internal committee of API Blueprint, that were dancing on the flowers saying, whatever we want to add to the specification, it's just gonna be yet another recursive structure here. But what we were doing was, Content zero, content zero, content zero. But this is what we have been doing in API. We were missing the tooling to query the structure and get semantic stuff. And so yeah, on one side, creating new stuff, extending the spec was super easy. Actually, the spec was not even um, extended for real, it was just yet another element. But for us, this was the pain that we're going through. Like, um, content, 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 content. And then eventually, with the passing of the time, some tooling started to appear and the situation has been a little bit improving. And I think right now there is a library called API Elements JS that uh, makes the job a little bit easier. But at my times, this is what we were doing. Um, and so, um, although we, I think we had a very good specification, kind of, I, I think you know, API Blueprint was kind of the beta max of uh, the APIs. Like it was probably, I, I think it was a little bit better, great readability, but the lack of the tooling it was only pushed by a single vendor, and so it, did, it didn't really make it. Um, yeah, this is, this, and so this, is, this has been the, my first experience you know, in OpenAPI in general, in, with API Blueprint. Then, I, then API understood that maybe we should support OpenAPI too as well, because it makes sense, it has a lot of market, and instead, let's try to write the, 
the wave instead of being you know, uh, destroyed by it. And so in OpenAPI, the thing is a little bit different because if, in, in, in API Blueprint, you need the parser, and then you need the validation, and then it's everything is super strict, and then you get that structure. But in OpenAPI, you, know, you have a YAML file, and, or a JSON file, whatever you feel more comfortable with. And so for most of the people, and even for me initially, the idea was, I don't need to parse anything. JSON.parse, no errors, I'm good to go, this is good, I can use it. Um, but uh, it turns out it is not in this way. And I think one of the problems we have, again, this is solid my opinion, but I think one of the problems we have is that this misconception that given that, given that this is a JSON file, I don't need to do anything else later. This is the file, I parse it, it's good, I can use it. I'm gonna give you three examples that have been really struggling for me working with the format so far. Uh, the first one uh, is it's the JSON references, because uh, if you have a JSON reference, it means that the file as it is, you cannot really use it. Probably you need to resolve them in order to you know, make toolings around it. And so, first of all, you need to resolve it, and if you resolve the references, you have the problem of the circular thing. What do you do, right? And so, for example, API Blueprint was kind of barring this, the saying, we will not parse anything with more than level three of nesting. And so we, on the documentation side, we were safe. Like, if the SD is coming out, we're good to go. We had the pre-process and validation step, and so we were good to go. With OpenAPI, again, we, we need to figure out what, what do we want to do with the references? Do we want to resolve it? To what degree? What do we do with the circular one? And this is, has been kind of a major um, pain for me is that I, I never clearly understood where the spec is allowing the references because if you go to the spec and maybe I didn't read it correctly, it may be, but you can see there are parts that are explicitly saying references are allowed and sometimes they're not. But since it's a JSON document, you can still put it anyway, right? Uh, you can ignore the problem. Uh, the, I'll get to this point. The problem is since it's a JSON document, people don't care. Just, just going to put it anyway. And I'll, I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more on that later. But again, this source of confusion uh, was one of the reasons of the tooling diver that tools start to diverge. Some, somebody's going to treat the references in a certain way, like not, not resolving them, or uh, stopping up to a certain amount of resolving. Somebody's going to do something else. And then you, you, you get tooling diverge and differences. Uh, and so the second one, this is, uh, this is kind of a regular thing, you know, uh, OpenAPI has the concept of uh, you, can, you can put some of the stuff into the reference section and then you can use it wherever you want. And so this means, uh, this means again that the document as it is, it's not exactly useful. You need to look up where the server definition is and, uh, you know, and then use it for real. And then, you know, OpenAPI also supports overrides and so it's something that you need to take into account. Like if a particular path has a server, particular server definition, then you do, not need, you do not need to consider the ones on the top, and that's something that you should remember. Again, this is yet another proof that the open API documents, as they are, you, you cannot really use it as, as they are coming to you. And then, you know, I, this is, I've been debating since ages, but uh, the schema object, and the problem is both OpenAPI 2 and OpenAPI 3 are using a subset with some addition to the JSON schema. And so, you know, you get a subset of JSON schema draft 4 with some custom extensions on the top, and then subset of JSON schema uh, wrap draft 0, 0, and custom extensions on the top, which, which is totally fine. Again, the OpenAPI document needs to be processed. The problem is, 99% of the people, when they see schema, they're like, oh, okay, AGV, just load it, it's gonna be fine, okay, then the validation is not working, and uh, uh, probably, probably the schema validation is even going to fail, or the compilation is even going to fail. And uh, this leads to tooling differences. Some, I, I think probably there are, there are some people not even aware of this difference in schema Open API 2 and Open API 3, but that's something really important. And we'll be spending a lot of time to unify and um, um, to unify and, ma and make something useful out of it. And the last thing, which probably is going to be a surprise for you, but it was for me talking with the people, is that uh, OpenAPI 2 and 3, no ver it's, it's a different version, and so it's a bragging change, but uh, they are kind of similar, and so most of the people that were like, Open API and period, it's just gonna work anyway. And I think the reason, that's, that's, that's my personal opinion, is that you, know, you can see between Open API 2 and 3 that 
the servers has been changing, and then some definition have been kind of organized in a more systematic way down on the, uh, on the, on the, down on the document, but what gives you the 80% of the value of the documents, the parts, are actually kind of the same. And so 99% of the people are just extracting this thing from the document, just ignoring all the changes, giving to the system, and pretending it will work. And this was, was another problem that I've been seeing a lot on the market. And what is even worse is that the people won't read the spec, don't want to understand the changes, but they're going to blame you for not supporting the wrong things. Uh, and uh, and I, I, we've been even uh, you know, seeing some people willing to migrate to Stoplet, for example. We are kind of strict on the type of open API documents that we accept. And we had customers saying, but this other provider supports this thing. And we were like, but that's not the standards. And they're like, we're not migrating then. And th that gives you also, what, what should we do here? Should we follow the front flow or be the only one not making any money out of it? That's another, one another of the struggles. And so uh, again, the point is Open API 2 and 3 are not enough. You need to pre-process it. And I think uh, it's clear because you can see uh, that different companies have been trying to unify the way you treat open API documents. And so API back in the time, uh, we, uh, the company created API elements. It was uh, meant for API blueprint, and then it was extended to open API 2 and 3. Um, project is still alive. Not really anybody uses it anymore. Um, then when I was working in Joint Launch Budget, we even had kind of an internal thing, total disaster, but we, we, we were using something again because we, we felt the need. Um, <laughs> We in Stoplight, we had to do the same. And uh, it, it's incredible that in my five years, all I've been doing is creating abstraction for API documents. And I, I still enjoy it, by the way. And, <laughs> and so, you know, in Stoplight, we have our own things. We don't really push it so much because it's very proprietary. It's not proprietary, but it's really tamed to our specific needs. And so it probably it's not going to make sense for you. And then, you know, Postman went in another direction, but still have a converter. That, to me, it's still kind of a processing of an API file into something they can use internally. Uh, you know, documentation is, is here. And then I still remember this thing. This was in API days 2016. Misha from Poco came saying, I have the universal ASD that's going to rule anything. Project that in two months later, 2017 something, not, not really used anymore. And then Insomnia. Both by Kong, they have their own format. And this, I think, it's validating the idea that the open API documents, again, are not enough. You've got to do something with it. You've got to process it. Um, and um, so just to recap, the key differences in my experience in working with API Blueprint first and open API then later is that um, the API elements was a super genetic data structure uh, that would, would support API Blueprint, Open API 2, Open API 3. In theory, adding a sync API support will not be a problem. Uh, one of my coworkers, Steven Meisel, was even able to write an internal language that you can even execute as code to, get, to give you the idea how much flexible it was. But the problem for us, it was really um, too generic. And so even debugging the ASD was, uh, what, what do we do with this thing? Uh, uh, content, 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 content. What, what, what is the data? You know, you, you know what I mean. And indeed, it was aimed for machines. But uh, uh, the debugging was hard, and the tool was in there at the time. And since we were the only company promoting for it, we had to create the tooling. But you, know, you also have a company to run. On the other hand, uh, the Open API has a very HTTP-specific structure, which uh, um, you know, it's, uh, you can visually inspect it. It's super easy to check it out. Um, and uh, finding the data is, is, is kind of easy. That's a very good thing. Uh, but what I've been arguing for a while is that to me it's not even meat and fish because it's a JSON. So it is kind of readable, not completely readable. But at the same time, you cannot give it to a machine. You need the pre-processing steps. Uh, but again, payload are easily inspectable. And again, I, I, I really feel that the tooling is, is, is not it's not there yet, yet anyway, uh, just for the reason that I said, you know, somebody is doing it in another direction and somebody else is doing something else. And so before drawing the conclusion, does anybody have any question on, on, on the topic, on the thing? I mean, it's just a super rant. I understand that if you, but, but I, I wanted to do that so badly. I knew, uh, yeah. Facts 
something that we could maybe model and borrow from? Mm. Honestly, I don't, I don't think I have any good example. I don't, I don't, not on the top of my head. Ramul. Yeah, but I think uh, it's, it's in the conclusion, though. So maybe I'll, I'll, I'll probably respond to the question later. So I'm going to just jump into uh, the conclusion. So the, for me, at least for OpenAPI, I think um, the specification without kind of an official reference implementation was just this thing, you know, Ramon had something to give you to start with. Uh, yeah, they, they're going to give you a direction, but then everybody's going to go in a different direction, you know. And uh, because, you know, the spec can be ambiguous. No matter how, how efforts you're going to put into, somebody will understand something different. And maybe, you know, having a reference implementation would have backed up some of the assumptions that were made back in the time. And, um, and if the committee somehow will, will, will give that tooling, it will probably give the standard level that we should use instead of going in our own direction. But I, I do understand that it's, it's, it's not an easy job. Um, and finally, we'll probably stop of having this thing that every tooling vendor, it's not really parsing the open API spec. It's giving its point of view. I, I think this is doing this, and so I'm going to go in my own direction. You know what I mean? Um, and in the open API 2 and 3, I think, uh, again, this thing that the 80% paths are very similar, this led to what, uh, to what, uh, what fragmented the ecosystem, because most of the people I've been talking, maybe I was just talking with stupids, but every, every, every time I was having a discussion is, it's just open API 2 with that, 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 that I don't care anyway. Uh, that's, uh, that's really all I had to do, and I, I hope I give you some insights in, uh, in working as a tooling vendor.